recording in progress. Oh, welcome everyone to Satsang with Kate and Shannon. Um, a big virtual hug, a big joining, a big bringing you into my heart and you bringing in me and everyone here into your heart. So just extending that love, feel it extending. It's not um, personal love, it's God's love that is all encompassing. So something that's all encompassing encompasses all. So this encompasses everything, all, this love. It's not asking for anything. It doesn't ask you to be a certain way to join this group or to be part of this group or to do anything. It doesn't have conditions on anything. It loves you completely and wholly with our conditions. And we all have that love within us. We all can remember that love, that unconditional love, vast, infinite, boundless love that we call God. <laughs> we put the name God on it, but that's what it is, and it has no opposites. And we can experience that, even while seemingly still in the dream believing we're associating a little bit with a body as a body but we're using the body now for that love to extend so with a demonstration of God's love he says to teach is to demonstrate so we can use words or not it's totally up to you it's where your mind is at it's got nothing to do with behavior so your mind so we're either in the wrong mind, the right mind, or the one mind. And they're all really just terms for aspects of where, where we're at in that moment. So in the one mind um, is so much more. So it's like a whole different experience in the one mind. And that's where we want to get to, and we can, it is certain. Um, there's a lesson, something about, you know, anyone that seeks the truth, there's a certainty you will get there. So all we have to do is just be really willing to seek the truth. Have that willingness, just persevere, you might say. Persevere through the ego's little tantrums, if you look at the ego as a little toddler, you know, if you take the scissors off the toddler, it's going to scream. So the ego doesn't like when you don't pay attention to it. It wants attention and it's going to do lots of antics. It's going to constantly tell you how someone needs to change or you need to withdraw your love from someone but what this egoic mind does is never reveals to you that it's nothing and that's the holy spirit's job we have to as course students turn to jesus and the holy spirit for the way out helpers like myself and other teachers of a course can help but you have to do the forgiveness work um he said my role was just to demonstrate that through forgiveness you can be free. But I have to still be vigilant. Yes, so did Jesus. He says he was tempted into impatience or something like that. Look, I get all the quotes wrong, so, <laughs> so don't worry. I've never been good at quotes, but I get the, the gist of it. So um, you will be tempted to feel unfairly treated and that's okay all you need to do is recognize that it's another forgiveness opportunity it's a lesson that you can learn and if you don't learn it the ego will project the same thing onto someone else right it's going to keep projecting over and over what we need to see is that there is no projection 
there's no dream. He tells us, he steps us out of this um, world. We have to accept the course fully, which I did, even though I didn't understand it and didn't really accept it. I had to accept in my mind that all its teachings were true because to hold a little part of it, uh, out of it, and say, I don't accept that little bit, but I really like this stuff about this, this and this. You won't get home. You have to accept it all. And it is difficult and it's not easy. But if you apply it and practice and devote yourself to it and become willing to spend time, put more emphasis on the course's teachings throughout each day, you will come to the peace of God. To come to that, you have to let go of the world. You have to let go of seeking or thinking there's anything here of any value. And that includes the hardest part is your relationships. Your relationships with your parents, your partner, your children, your grandchildren, your friends. They're not there. They're not, we don't have any relationships in terms of egoic relationships in form. Everyone is pure love in the mind of God. And that's why these Christ blessings teach us that. They're not just there to make us feel good. They reveal things. Things are revealed to us in our mind. We start to see the people aren't bodies. They're not people. It's all made up. And things are revealed. As we start to learn the course, we might get a lot of fear because we want this world to be real. We want our relationships to be real. We feel that they're loving with our family and friends and children. But our children are not there and neither are we. We're not here in a world. We're not bodies. We're all in a big projection, a big dream. But the true reality, see, our children aren't bodies. They're not born. They don't have a life to suffer and, you know, get a drug addiction or an alcohol addiction or an anorexia or <laughs> eating disorders and all these different things and anxiety and depression. All those are part of this world. And there's nothing wrong with getting certain help for anybody that needs it. But the only true way out is to really understand for yourself so you can possibly help others is to see that this, this life that we think is so important has no reality. And a reality is in God, formless love. And then we can use the body, our words, the world, that is a dream that has no reality, that we come, we'll see that. We can use that to help others. And in the section, um, Manual for Teachers, when he says what is healing, he says that, you know, the teacher of God comes to tell his brother what you think is real isn't so. Now, we don't have to say that, but what we do is we demonstrate it. We demonstrate every day that nothing can affect us. And by that demonstration, we can then, um, when um, he says, you know, that um, uh, about miracles, well, that is the miracle. The miracle is when we have a change of perception and we're doing our forgiveness. And then the miracle is also when we help others. So my role here, and Shannon's role here in this group is to extend the miracle to everyone here and assist with healing by demonstrating that what you think, if you are thinking something is real, by constantly giving the message and the demonstration that nothing real can be threatened, nothing unreal exists. So nothing unreal exists. And that's the big, the big forgiveness that has to happen. We never separated from formless love. We never came into a life, a body. We were never born. We were never had a childhood. We never got money. We never worked. Nothing here in this lifetime ever happened. And nothing is happening and nothing will ever happen. It's all a dream in the mind, the, the son's mind. It's a dream that's been projected out and we have fallen asleep believing that this is real but even our experience our saying thinking that we're in a body and we're touching something 
or speaking or eating or drinking or anything we do here is all part of the projection. All that experience that we have is still part of the projection. It's the mind projecting in, um, seemingly individual lives. So we'll, I want to also always bring back the metaphysics so that you understand the, um, that we have to accept this eventually. You may not accept it overnight, but you have to hear it a number of times and understand it and um, contemplate it and talk to Jesus and the Holy Spirit about it. So, you know, show me this. I used to say to the Holy Spirit, well, you know, if this world's a dream, you know, show me how it's a dream. So you can give the Holy Spirit and Jesus. You can really call to them. I know what the ego is like because I've been there and it is hell. It's awful. It's terrible, right? When you're in the ego, you get a lot of pain and a lot of sickness. It all comes together because you're associating yourself with a little body in a world. You're fully immersed in the dream, not knowing it's a dream. <clears throat> so he will step us out. Little bit by little bit, he holds our hand as we go up the ladder home. And sometimes we're going to go up and down and around. On the <laughs> spend time here, not really wanting to advance. We're too scared to really accept these teachings, that there is nobody, there's no one out there, there's only perfect love. So we have to come to see that there's an alternative understanding or, or way to look at this world. So we're not going to disappear, we're not going to flash out, but what when the body's not going to just all of a sudden disappear. What is going to happen is your mind is going to change and through these blessings is part of forgiveness. It doesn't encompass all the teachings, but it is a major part of his teachings. So these, um, these blessings of our brother, what happens is because we think our body is real and it's outside us and it's doing something to us and we're upset with it and we can't see that it's we're all in a big mind, even our body and their body is all part of a big projection. We can't see that. So what he does is he meets us where we're at and he asks us to do what forgiveness and forgiveness is changing our mind about our brother. That's how he's bringing us home. It's not, it's not, um, it's a forgiveness lesson, right? So rather than looking at our brother as guilty, keeping us asleep in hell in our mind he's asking us to look at our brother as a way to come to have peace of mind ourselves so our brother is an image in the mind of all the big projection has no meaning anything our brother says or does has absolutely no meaning because god is perfect love and nothing ever happened outside perfect love so anything we think is happening, a war, um, famines, slaughterhouses, everything, they're not happening. They're happening in a dream and it feels like hell when we're stuck in that nightmare. So we have to give ourselves over as course students, as part of the mind waking up to these teachings and to practice them, whether we like them or not, he says, just do the lessons, just practice them. You will see how they work. Don't judge yourself by doing them. Don't let any judgment come in each day about how well you did. Just do them. So when it, whenever he writes instructions, we really have to read it and we have to say, he's telling me to do this. And he's saying that at a later stage, something's going to come in and dawn on my mind something's going to be revealed something's going to it's like a little budding flower it's going to flower and I'm going to see everything differently but there might be a period where I feel nothing's going on but he's he knows 
that he's setting up our mind. We're really doing the mind training, even if we don't feel any change. It is working. Anything you do to do with forgiveness, contemplating these teachings, reading the course, doing your lessons, reading Disappearance of the Universe, which I recommend highly, I think, or Gary's books are were so, so helpful. Ken Wapnick was also my teacher. Um, you stick with teachers that really don't deviate from the truth. And I made a commitment when I started listening to Ken and listening to Gary that I would never deviate from the truth, even though I have had moments over, um, say, the last nine or 10 years since I had that awakening. There's been moments where the ego has tried to <laughs> pull me back and I've had to get very vigilant and shift away. So you will be tested or not tested. It's you will, you need to be vigilant. And that's why he puts it all through the course. I value the peace of God. I value Jesus's view and teaching that this world is an illusion. There's nothing here. There's nothing outside love. So your reality is perfect love. So that's what we're choosing, this reality and all-encompassing love. That's what we're going for. That's why we do forgiveness. We want a tranquil mind that has an experience of this all-encompassing love. And once you get any experience, whether you call it a holy instant or a revelation or a mystical experience, they're all just words. Trying, We're trying to put a word onto experiences that are outside the ego mind and we all have seemingly different experiences and they last for different periods of time but then once you're back in the ego you need to do forgiveness you need to be constantly saying to yourself this is mine I'm I'm responsible for what I see and therefore I will ask for the miracle to change my perception so this is the whole crux of what we're doing why we're doing it we want to get back to that peace we want to have our beingness in the peace of God the peace of infinite love and it is possible and I feel very honored to have this small group and lead you and many people have messaged me and said they're having experiences and deepenings understandings and that's the whole purpose of this <clears throat> This group may not be for new students, but new students might come in. But um, I think if you were joining this group, you might have had to have done all the lessons, finished the lessons, because um, we're going to be blending some lessons together. Um, so anyway, I'm just truly grateful for everyone here that you are turning up because this is really this the way I'm sort of guided to teach is to really um, give you um, meditations and things to do that you have to be willing to do and you will come to completely undo the ego and have this what they call an awakened mind or a still quiet mind you will and I can be part of that if that's part of what the Holy Spirit wants for you. So I just turn up and do what I'm guided to do. So does Shannon. We're just here to be truly helpful. We're honoured to do it. We're honoured to share what we have been taken through that helped us. And we're not, we're not waiting on sitting here, strumming our fingers, waiting for everyone to wake up. We have, I have no outcome for this I am not in a hurry for anyone to do anything I'm not um, if someone messages me with their experience that's nice but it doesn't bother me if you don't I'm not sitting here waiting for shares or likes or anything I'm just here to say that if you practice this forgiveness if you accept all the teachings of the course exactly as they are and open your mind to it you will be led to this beautiful, tranquil peace. You will love 
everyone completely. You will be so full of a love that you cannot imagine being joined with. This love of God is so amazing, so vast, so beautiful, so holy. You just would not want anything to do with the ego's thoughts again. You just wouldn't because this love is so gorgeous. You're just not interested in it. To have this peace and love of God within your mind, it is worth every second of forgiveness and every little bit of ego tantrum. No, turning away from it and laughing at it if you can. Whatever forgiveness you do, just do forgiveness. So today we're going to do a forgiveness practice through workbook lesson 105. If you've got your book there and you like to read along, you don't have to. You can just sit quietly and listen as Shannon and I read along. <laughs> So, um, and we're going to do the, um, the blessing. Now, remember, every second week we'll be we doing some type of blessing. It'll be different every week. So, so Shannon, would you like to start? Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Kate. I did want to add, too, to what you were saying. Um, it's really helpful, and this is a practice that I was guided to put into place while while practicing forgiveness to remember that we always are just trying to put the guilt outside of us and make something else guilty and so if if you can remember that when you're practicing forgiveness like if it's a person or it's a war or it's a you know a dog being unfairly treated or <laughs> whatever you know it's if you can remember oh this is just me putting my guilt outside of me and so now let me look at this like and and just stop in your tracks and remember that because really it's that's all it is it's like this little reversal of cause and effect that is putting we're just throwing the guilt out so we can very easily let the holy spirit laugh it away help us to laugh away the guilt because the guilt isn't real like that's the whole point that's the miracle is the recognition the guilt is not real there's no reason to feel guilty ever. <laughs> so if, if you can remember that and, and just in the moment, you know, it's so important in the moment to just remember that it makes it so much easier. It's like, oh, this is unreal guilt that I'm putting outside of myself, you know, just to try to make it somebody else responsible for it, just so I can play the, the play that I'm the innocent victim here, you know, and, and just remember that you can laugh at it so easily then. He helps us to do that. So, okay, lesson 105. God's peace and joy are mine. God's peace and joy are yours. Today, we will accept them, knowing they belong to us. And we will try to understand these gifts increase as we receive them. They are not like to the gifts the world can give in which the giver loses as he gives the gift. The taker is the richer by his loss. Such are not gifts, but bargains made with guilt. The truly given gift entails no loss. It is impossible that one can gain because another loses. This implies a limit and an insufficiency. No gift is given thus. Such gifts are but a bid for a more valuable return, a loan with interest to be paid in full, a temporary lending meant to be a pledge of debt to be repaid with more than was received by him who took the gift. This strange distortion of what giving means pervades all levels of the world you see. It strips all meaning from the gifts you give and leaves you nothing in the ones you take. A major learning goal this course has set 
is to reverse your view in giving so you can receive. For giving has become a source of fear, and so you would avoid the only means by which you can receive. Accept God's peace and joy, and you will learn a different way of looking at a gift. God's gifts will never lessen when they are given away. They but increase thereby. So this ties in with there's no laws but God's. So in this egoic world, um, everybody uh, thinks if they give something away, they lose it. And um, he talks about, you know, gifts, but really everything, you know, we have to borrow money and we have to pay interest on it. And there's nothing just given freely. But God's gifts um go by different law right so god's gifts increase as they're given away right so we're talking about um god's peace and joy and this extending love so that's why you know this extension of love when we first join each time we join the journey the zoom as we're extending love you will feel more love so he puts the word receive but you might like to say um as i give it um you know you can put your own words on it like as i give this love away i feel more filled up with it or um i feel it i feel whatever i'm giving away in these blessings i feel they're building up in me so he sort of um he puts the word receive but what it is is your um nothing leaves your mind so it, this works in with that if I'm in God's love and I'm giving it away, my mind is then feeling more abundant in God's love. It's increasing. So these are the laws of God and ones that we really want to understand that giving is receiving or giving is having, having um, and building up. And embrace, and just like um, feeling more abundant in in that, and having that experience like deepen and mature and flower in our minds. So, um, a major learning goal this course has set is to reverse your view of giving so you can receive. So, uh, just this one sentence I've got underlined in my book. <laughs> a major learning goal this course has set is to reverse your view of giving so you can receive. So it's so important, um, you know, with the Holy Spirit lessons that we did, you know, um, to have um, peace, I must um, teach it or give it. So I must teach my brother that he cannot take my peace away and therefore I'm giving that extension of peace. It's, it's a, we have to understand those in sort of different ways because when we think of giving, we're always thinking of form. You know, I'm giving something a form away. But we've got to really open our mind that he's asking us to give away um, the gifts of God, you might say. For well, giving has become a source of fear, and so you would avoid the only means by which you can receive. So he's telling us the only way we're going to really be filled up with this peace, love, and joy, and um, our, uh, the, the experience of our guiltlessness and sinlessness is by giving the blessing, giving them away. So, um, and that's why he, I'll just read that sentence again. For giving has become a source of fear. That's giving as in material things. And so you would avoid the only means by which you can receive. So we have to reverse our understanding and come to see that he's asking us to give this away, to have it, to receive it, to have our being in it. We have to give this blessing to our brother. Accept God's peace and joy and you will learn a different way 
of looking at a gift. God's gifts will never lessen when they are given away. They but increase thereby. So they increase in us. And that's when he gave me that Christ blessing and I started using it. I started to have these little sparks of my innocence. And then as I kept using it, in all circumstances, anyone I had a grievance with or was fearful of or judging or finding guilty, as Shannon said, I would do the Christ blessing and it would shift something within me. So the gift of my innocence, uh, the tr my true self, was starting to bud and bloom within me as I gave it, gave it away. But at that time, I didn't understand this whole giving and receiving. I was just doing what he was asking me to do, and it became obvious later on. And that's why with the lessons, he says, just do them. And it becomes obvious later on why and how they work. So thank you, Shannon. <clears throat> Thank you, Kate. As heaven's peace and joy intensify when you accept them as God's gift to you, so does the joy of your creator grow when you accept his joy and peace as yours. True giving is creation. It extends the limitless to the unlimited. Eternity to timelessness and love unto itself. It adds to all that is complete already, not in simple terms of adding more, for that implies that it was less before. It adds by letting what cannot contain itself fulfill its aim of giving everything it has away, securing it forever for itself. <laughs> what a great sentence <laughs> our last bit of that last sentence giving everything it has away securing it forever for itself so we give that Christ blessing when we say we give it away we don't need to speak it to our brother we just need to do it give it to them we need to give a blessing to our brother um, and we will receive God's gifts of our, our knowing our true self. And it's lovely. He says true giving is creation. So if you've ever looked up um, and thought, gosh, what's creation? What does he mean by my creations? As you give this gift, you're creating. You are in creation because the ego would never give a pure, holy, loving gift away of pure love to your brother because the ego's whole thought system is about separation so we can it, creation is in the mind and when we're giving this we're in this beautiful part of creation I know some teachers say that while you're here you're not part of creation but what you've got to understand is that heaven is here and now in your mind and creation is in heaven um so um, I just had a phone call. <laughs> um, so we, anyway, we'll just read on. <laughs> um, today, accept God's peace and joy as yours. So let's just do that now. Let's just um, say for three minutes, just accept, just um, I just let me set this alarm. Just simply say to yourself, I'm going to accept God's peace and joy now as mine. I'm just going to accept it. Just feel yourself open up and just repeat that. I accept God's peace and joy as mine. And really feel, okay, I accept it. I really feel that acceptance and I'll just be quiet for a few minutes.
Okay. Um, I'll just read the rest of this paragraph. Okay, just if you can keep your eyes closed and just keep accepting God's peace and joy are mine and really accept it. Let him complete himself as he defines completion. You will understand that what completes him must complete his son as well. He cannot give through loss. No more can you. Receive his gift of joy and peace today and he will thank you for your gift to him. He wants to give this gift because in creation, giving and extending this love and gratitude and joy and peace is all there is in God's mind. It's a constant creation. It's a constant extending, but it never, it can't actually get bigger because it is all that is. So what happens is it's like living in a state of complete bliss forever, eternally in bliss. And that's being in God's mind. It's so wonderful and so glorious. There's just no words to describe the experience. And that love that created us is still there and we are still there in that joy and peace and blissfulness. Receive his gift of joy and peace today and he will thank you for your gift to him. So God is, is the essence of love and gratitude and <clears throat> joy and peace. He doesn't actually thank us for what we're doing. But what it is, is just these are words set to sort of say to us that this is something that we really, um, if we want to come home to that place of the experience of being joined with our infinite Father, the love that we are that created us as formless love, um, we have to accept it. We have to make that decision. Um, I'm just going to accept that love, peace and joy created me and I am that. And I'm going to receive it as I accept it. Um, Shannon, would you like to read on? Thanks. Sure. Thank you, Kate. And it's, it's, if you didn't feel the peace and joy of God, sometimes it's helpful to thank him for it. And it's through that gratitude to him that you can really feel it. It's almost like this feeling in your heart that just expands and expands until you can just tell that it's limitless. Today, our practice periods will start a little differently. Begin today by thinking of those brothers who have been denied by you the peace and joy that are their right under the equal laws of God. Here, you denied them to yourself, and here, you must return to claim them as your own. Think of your enemies a little while and tell each one as he occurs to you. My brother, peace and joy I offer you that I may have God's peace and joy as mine. I'll read this through and then we'll go through and do it. Okay, we'll spend some time doing it. I'll just read the instructions. Thus you prepare yourself to recognize God's gifts to you. And let your mind be free of all that would prevent success today. Now are you ready to accept the gift of peace and joy that God has given you? Now are you ready to experience 
the joy and peace you have denied yourself. Now you can say, God's peace and joy are mine, for you have given what you would receive. So we can only have or receive God's peace and joy as we give it. And what happens is we deny ourselves the experience of that peace and joy by holding a brother as an enemy. It's a block to the awareness of peace and joy. So um, okay, so I'll just read a little bit of paragraph eight. You must succeed today if you prepare your mind as we suggest, for you have let all blocks or bars to peace and joy be lifted up. And what is yours can come to you at last. So tell yourself, God's peace and joy are mine. And close your eyes a while and let his voice assure you that the words you speak are true. So what I'll do is we'll go back to this original um, little blessing that we're going to give any brother that we're holding any grievance against, even the slightest irritation we will do it. So um, I'll give over um, maybe five minutes for this, um, maybe 10 minutes. Um, so what I'd like you to do is um, I will repeat this saying a few times during the 10 minutes in case you forget it. Okay, and maybe Shannon can write it into the chat, this little blessing. I want you to, um, he's asked, Jesus is asking you to think of your enemy. So what I'd like you to do is do this very slowly. Don't rush through. Okay, so bring the first person that you have any grievance against. The Holy Spirit will give you that person. You don't have to worry about it all just appear in your mind. See them in your mind, see their face, see their body and say this blessing to them in your mind and remind yourself that this is for you. You are going to have your mind cleared of its blocks to experiencing the peace of God by offering this blessing so there's motivation to do it. You are going to receive God's peace and joy as you give it, because this is the law of God. As you give it, you are filled up with it. So let's go. I'll just um, repeat these words for you to do. So. Quiet in your mind. See the first character that you a little bit annoyed with, irritated, think are guilty, feel unfairly treated, whatever. Doesn't matter. You'll know who it is. And look at their face or image and say, to them, my brother, peace and joy I offer you. Really feel like you're giving peace and joy to them. Really feel that you're extending peace and joy. that I may have God's peace and joy as mine. So I remind myself why I want to do this, why I want to look past all the judgments, all the barriers and blocks that the ego, the little ego is putting into my mind as reasons for not forgiving, practice for, practicing forgiving. So we're shifting into right-minded thoughts 
you can ask Jesus or the Holy Spirit to join you. Really feel yourself extending peace and joy to them, giving them a gift. So now I will be quiet for the next eight minutes. As you try to find anyone that you are holding something against in your mind. My brother, peace and joy I offer you.
just in the last minute um, bring back into your mind one by one all the characters, the images that you have blessed and just bless them again. Just bring them back one by one and just say, my brother, peace and joy I offer you and just keep circling them around and just keep blessing them. Oops, I just was talking then. <laughs> so just notice how giving these gifts, God's gifts of peace and joy, we receive it. Let's just spend a few moments now validating how you feel right now. If you feel even the slightest bit more peaceful and more happy, whatever, just validate to yourself that this works, that as I give this away, I'm receiving this gift. It is God's gift. It is our true self is budding up in our mind into our experience. So we can validate this law of God that as we give these blessings, in any way, there's so many ways to bless all through the lessons you'll start to see. There's lovely blessings. Um, we receive it. So that's why we would like to keep using these blessings any time we're upset. So Shannon, would you like to read the last paragraph of this lesson so we can really hear from Jesus how valuable they are to us throughout the day? Sure, thank you. Spend your five minutes thus with him each time you can today, but do not think that less is worthless when you cannot give him more. At least remember hourly to say the words which call to him to give you what he wills you to give and wills you to receive. Determine not to interfere today with what he wills. And if a brother seems to tempt you to deny God's gift to him, see it as but another chance to let yourself receive the gifts of God as yours. Then bless your brother thankfully and say, my brother, peace and joy I offer you, that I may have God's peace and joy as mine. So here's another chance for us to use a different kind of blessing, but it's all the same. And really deeply understand that we're only giving to ourselves when we do this. This is for us, right? And we are actually helping our brother by doing this, but we have to receive it first. We have to do this 
to, and then our brother is helped because we don't hold anything against him by offering him peace and joy. And what you'll find is all your relationships will be really healed as you practice these blessings. You'll find that you will be just naturally more lighthearted. You'll find that um, your sense of humour, you will just start to say lighthearted things. You'll be laughing more. Um, and you just, yeah, because the ego is not there. So there's no seriousness and there's no, <clears throat> there's less and less projections of guilt. And as Jesus says, just, he says um, here, if a brother temp seems to tempt you to deny God's gift to him, it's interesting how he says it, we're denying the gift to our brother when we're tempted by the ego. See it as but another chance. So see it as another opportunity to let yourself receive the gifts of God. Now, as you do this, it's amazing. And the more you do it, and the more you continue to do it, you just start to feel so good inside. You just start to feel this essence and it feels so easy, but you will be tempted. The ego is going to um, make a big story about someone and then you have to be really willing to say, no, I've got to offer this brother God's peace and joy. So. Um, to finish today, um, I'm going to go back to Lesson 108, which we've done before, and use the blessing in that because in this lesson, to give and receive the one in truth, <clears throat> I really love this blessing in the second part. To everyone, I offer quietness. To everyone, I offer peace of mind. And to everyone, I offer gentleness. And I love that word gentleness. Because haven't we all just desired to find someone that is really gentle? And I think that's why we're very attracted to Jesus. Because he represents this pure gentleness. We really love gentleness. And so we want to have it as our beingness have our beingness in that gentleness and so we need to give it to have it to receive it so we remember we got to give this away to have it <laughs> so let's do a 10 minute meditation to finish where um you just you can um just say it to everyone I offer quietness. To everyone, I offer peace of mind. To everyone, I offer gentleness. And just feel this quietness going out. Do it very slowly to say the first one. I To everyone, I offer gentle. Actually, I'll lead you through it. All right, so let's start. Close your eyes again. And just feel this essence of everyone, 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 everywhere, everything, every animal, every blade of grass, every car, every drop of water, everything. Just say to everyone and everything, I offer quietness and feel this quietness coming from you and getting it.
you really feel this quietness coming from within you, extending out to cover everything and everyone. I offer you quietness. I offer you this deep quietness. And now offer everyone peace of mind. To everyone, I offer peace of mind. Just feel this beautiful peace, tranquility, extending out from you to everyone and everything. I feel it enveloping them, touching them. To everyone, I offer peace of mind. If your mind starts wandering, just keep repeating the affirmation. Now, my favourite, to everyone, I offer gentleness. I'm going to start crying now because I just love this gentleness so much. I feel this gentleness coming from you and extending. I just feel it extending to everyone. It's so lovely. I just envelop everyone in your gentleness. Now, I'll just take you through something else. I want you to now picture Jesus in front of you in some way. It doesn't matter how it is. It could just be some sort of essence of him. Or you might be feeling him having some type of form. It doesn't matter. It's right for you. Just invite him in.
Now I want you to hear him say this blessing to you. See him say to you, I offer you quietness and really feel this quietness coming from him to you, enveloping you. Feel yourself joined in this quietness with him. Now hear him say, I offer you peace of mind and really feel joined in this deep peace of mind that is offering you and joining you in. And now, see him say to you, I offer you my gentleness. And feel this very tender, gentle love being offered to you. Now I want you to imagine Jesus offering everybody quietness, peace of mind and gentleness. Feel him offering it to everyone. And now, standing beside Jesus, 
Are you together? Join together. Bring in the person that you hold the biggest grievance against. And you and Jesus will join together now to offer this brother quietness, peace of mind, and gentleness. This is helping us offer our brother as Jesus would offer. It has helping us understand that's how he wants us to do it without any conditions. Pure love. Divine love, offering gentleness to our brother, being the Christ self. As he shows us the way, and this is the way. Let him show us how he blesses this one that we hold something against. And let us learn. This is what is called looking with Jesus at our brother. Joining his mind. So, as we finish this meditation of blessing, being blessed, blessing, you start to see it's all going round. Jesus is blessing us. We're blessing him. He's blessing everyone. So are we. But one thing that you can maybe validate that you may not have already recognized is that if you've learned from Jesus in that instant how he looks on your brother how he offers him gentleness and you have learned then you are joining in the same mind as him that gentleness is within you you've joined in it so you need to validate to yourself that that's in your mind. And when I say your mind, it's not really correct. It's the mind, right? It's not a personal mind. So we can validate to ourselves that we've joined in the Christ mind. And we can validate how good that experience is, how much lighter we feel.
we are just going to feel just happier from doing this. So thank you to Shannon for co-hosting. Thank you to everyone for joining and being willing. Um, it's been wonderful. And for those that are close to evening time, I always suggest that you try to remain in quietness if you can for the rest of the evening because what happens after these really deep meditations there can be some more experiences and realizations that come in as we shift into the Christ mind there's things that come in so try not to just close the zoom off and get on your phone or get on some device or start talking about anything to anyone really try to maintain this silence if you need to speak just use just for, speak for practical purposes but really offer this time now for deepening and if you can't that's okay it still will happen you're not missing out. But when you go to bed tonight, just really try to recall this, offer the blessing again to your brother and put the Holy Spirit in charge of your mind throughout the night. And thank you, everyone. It's lovely to join you and bless with you in the Christ mind. So thank you. I love you, I bless you, I honour you, I see only your Christ self <laughs> and it's beautiful and holy, it's lovely and divine and we'll see you next week. Thank you.